Today I went to Circuit City and I got a chance to play around with the Acer Aspire 1. The Acer Aspire 1 is a netbook um, right in the same class as the Asus EPC. Now, I like it a lot. I like it better than the EPC and the main factor for that, if, in, if nothing else, would be the keyboard. The keyboard is a little bit bigger than the one on the EPC. That really makes a big difference. It is much more comfortable to use. Um, it wasn't flat and it wasn't cramped. It was a very, very nice keyboard to work with. The Acer Aspire 1 contains a 1.6 gigahertz Atom processor by Intel, 8 gigabytes of flash, which by the way can be expanded. There are two SD slots, one on the right, one on the left. The one on the left um, acts as a um, expansion for the internal flash and in your um, in your file manager there's a panel on the left that shows how much space you have on your flash disk well if you have an SD card in that left hand slot it takes the flash disk and the SD card and puts them into a single um, single uh, memory stack um, the system runs Linpus Linux and it is very easy to work with. There are four quadrants, and those are net uh, connecting, which is your um, internet stuff. You have work, which is basically open office. You have um, files, which is your file manager. You have fun, which is games and media, and you have your settings. Uh, one of the things under the in net portion that it does not come with is. Um, is Skype and unfortunately that is a bit of a downer for me because I use Skype a lot and um, I do not think there's a way to install third-party applications at least the guy at the store said that he wasn't sure because he didn't know what kernel it runs and as far as I know you have no access to that kernel um let's see what else I'm doing this for memory so be patient with me please um I mentioned the processor, 8 gigs of flash, uh, Linpus Linux, the four quadrants that the um, that the desktop is split up into. Um, it does have Wi-Fi on board, and I believe it has Bluetooth, but I have not been able to work with that. I was not able to work with that. Um, but overall, it is a very, very nice system. The boot time is very good very very good it, it it from zero to ready it's about it, it's about 13 seconds from zero to ready it's about 13 seconds and because it's flash based all the applications opened up really quick so the aspire one is overall a, a fantastic system i would highly highly recommend it um if you're interested in any of the ports and whatnot, you can just go to Aspire.com, click on the uh, Acer, excuse me, Acer.com, you know, click on the Aspire and get some more information. Now, I have some notes on this, so if you'll excuse me for just one second, um, I'll see if I need anything to refer to anything more. I would have used the notes for this, except it would have took taken too long. So, um, pardon me just for one second. Um, this the system costs three hundred and seventy nine dollars uh, between three seventy nine and three eighty nine. I don't remember the figure he gave me, but it's under four hundred dollars. Um, let's see, unknown. Okay, covered that. Covered that. Okay, uh, pretty much I've covered everything. Uh, the only final remark is that everything is very easy to use. It's very intuitive. Um, one of the things I will say that I do not have on this list is that there really is no accessibility. In fact, sometimes I think it's a bit too simple. This is what I don't like about it. Um, there is no magnification. There's no text enlarging. Thankfully, the icons are big enough to where once you get used to the system, you should be able to go by icons without any problem. You can do cursor navigation, um, but and if you can make out the white line underneath, which would be the text for the application, that turns black 
whenever it's highlighted, and the icon gets slightly larger, but it's barely noticeable. I couldn't notice that unless I got close. Um, it doesn't, so it does not come with accessibility. There is really no way to enlarge the font throughout the system like you can with other um, distributions. I'm not sure what the default of Linpus is because this is a different distribution altogether. It's basically customized from Linpus. I guess it's what Linpus comes with, but it's in a much easier to use format uh, for the average user, which is understandable because that's exactly who these are aimed for. You know, these are aimed for people that just want to get things done and get them done fast. So for that, I think I applaud it. But I do wish that there was a way to install third-party applications if there is, uh, you know, just comment on that, do a video response, maybe a demo of that. Um, but there is no accessibility. When I went, I asked the guy at Circuit City, I asked him, could you please, you know, is there a way to adjust the text on this? He said he didn't think so, and we went into the settings, and we couldn't find anything. There's not even a screen resolution. Well, I think maybe there was screen resolution, but there was nothing in terms of font. Um, I don't know, maybe we were looking in the wrong place, but we just couldn't find anything. Um, so that's those are the two negatives for this, is the lack of accessibility for visually impaired in both areas of screen adjustment and just assistive technology overall. There is none. But overall, as a system, for what it's meant to do, which is to get things done and get them done really quick, it's not meant to be your primary computer. It's meant to be a, a, a buddy computer. For example, I'm recording this on a MacBook. I could leave my MacBook... Um, in the dorm, I don't go, I, I commute to college, but let's say I was in a dorm, right? If I was in a dorm, I could leave the MacBook here in the dorm and, um, you know, commute with it to commute with the Aspire to class, thus saving a lot of weight on my backpack, about three pounds worth. And three pounds, when you have a lot of books, you know, three pounds is, is, is a lot. Um, so you can see where that could, where it could be used. Um, but the Aspire One is not meant to be your primary computer. Unless you plan to load a full distribution of Linux on it, which I'm not saying it can't be done, I would say just be careful because um, while the processor and RAM are certainly adequate, I think the flash storage might be a little bit weak. So if you're going to use it as your full computer and put Linux on it as a full distribution like GOS or Ubuntu, just be, just be wary that you're not going to have much storage unless you have an SD card in there. Um, but there you go, my pluses and minuses. And would I recommend it? Absolutely, I would. It's very light. It's very usable. The only thing you would have to get used to is the touchpad, because like the uh, HP Mini Note, for those of you who are familiar with that, it's got the same touchpad. And for those of you who are not, they take the buttons and put them on either side of the touchpad instead of underneath. So that would take some getting used to. But other than that, um, and the negatives that I've outlined, the Aspire is terrific. I would very much recommend it. And, um, you know, if I get to playing with it a little bit more and get to know it a little bit more, I might get one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But would I recommend it? Absolutely. I would love to recommend it. It's fantastic. Um, thank you for what, and very affordable. Like I said, $379 or $389. So, um, thank you everybody for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice evening.